month. Yes. Um, we might have Sharice back as much as we can now because Rod is off making money, making movies, commercials, and all that type of stuff. And I'm proud of him because he is being blessed in a pandemic. Yeah, so that's, that's just to show you that you can follow your dreams no matter what because it just don't stop. It just don't stop. It doesn't stop. But before we get started, you know what I want you guys to do is share, share, share. Uh, that we are live today and um, get your friends on, get your drink, we got a little cocktails here. And we have a wonderful guest tonight. We have Gladys Agla. <laughs> Agla, and she is an international speaker. She is a coach. She is a strategist. And she has a new book called Dumped, Not Dumped On. And we're going to talk about how to stop reliving past negative experiences in your life and in your business. And I think this is a perfect time for that because we're in Q4. Um, we almost at the end of the year, this year has went past like when. Yeah. And so, but it's always time for personal development. It's yeah. always time for peace. It's always time to grow. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk to her in a little bit. But, you know, we got that question of the day. Please and so do. I found that. And, and guys, look, I got my tablet. So I want to interact with you guys personally and give shout outs and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to ask questions. And if you want to chime in, please feel free to do so. But the question today is what would make you walk out in the middle of a date? Ooh. What would make you walk out? That is a good one. Uh, I guess like some disrespect, you mm -hmm. know, you say something disrespectful to me. Okay. Cause I'm definitely going to let you know. Okay. Um, and disrespect, you say disrespect, like what would be disrespectful gosh. for you? Uh, for instance, like like you were saying earlier, um, <clears throat> just too, talking too much about sex. Yes. Oh, you so sexy. Ooh, you know. Right. You know how some men can be. Yeah. You know, like I was out the other day, and this guy walked up on me, and he was like, "Oh, you look so beautiful." You know, da 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 da. And he was, you know, other ethnicity, and he was like, uh, "I like that dress. What's up under that dress?" Uh -huh. Yes, he did. Uh -huh. Yes, he did. That would make me walk out. That would make, make me walk out. You know, I mean, we weren't on a date. He just walked up on me. But the nerve, right? <laughs> but you know what? For me, it's the the, the sexual uh, gestures. Yes. Also, it is, let me say this, guys, because I want to be clear, because I don't want it to seem like we don't appreciate the uh, uh, compliments of, hey, beautiful, yes. hey, gorgeous. But I just want you to know all of y'all are doing it. Like, everybody's doing that and so it's not what it's not that it's not welcome it's just not original mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i appreciate the gesture of you're beautiful we do but i'm saying most men are saying the same thing mm -hmm. so nobody's doing research and this is a tempty from um uh meet your types mm -hmm. he talked about that it's like men and this is a free tip guys um if you want to get to know a woman or you're going to hit her up on social media, do a little research. So if you go to your page, you know that you're a stylist. You may know your hairstyles. You may, and you'll find out that you're in personal development, mm -hmm. that you have an organization, that you have a membership, you know, yeah. a program. Mm -hmm. And so come to me and talk to me about something that I'm interested in and yeah. I'm doing. And the woman should do the same. So this is always goes both ways. Yeah. But I'm like, get to know me. Don't hit me up like, hey, beautiful, you know. Where you from? And, you know, this and that. Talk to me about something that will engage me because everybody is saying kind of the same yeah, thing. Boring. They don't want to put any work in. That's so lazy. People are lazy. That's just lazy. So lazy. Don't be lazy, guys. Don't be lazy. And don't, and don't talk Ladies, about sex. don't you be lazy. Be yeah. creative as well. And just know, whenever we talk, we talk from both sexes. We're Absolutely. not just like men, men, men. We're not men bashing fashions at all. I have I sons and I have men. two grandbabies. <laughs> Shout out to my little new grandbaby that came Saturday, uh -oh. Mason and Mari. But I I definitely, you know, I hold men true to my, you know, close to my heart because I know that it's rough for them as well. Yeah. But you can't be out talking about your breasts and your, your, your booty and, yeah. you know, all this kind of stuff. Because then our, our thing is, is that your focus? Like, mm -hmm. are you trying to know me? Because here's the thing. You see women, they're attractive. I get it. We're beautiful. But then, and men, women see men and they're like, they're attractive. Yeah. They have cars and whatever you're looking for. But then you go out with them for a couple of weeks. You just slept with them or y'all just slept together. Let's say that. And then you realize four weeks later, I don't really like this person. Right. You know what I'm saying? So let's try to make those um, conscious 
decisions before we step into entanglements. Hey, hallelujah. Entanglements with people that we may not be ready to invest in because I believe relationships or trying to get in a relationship is like an investment. Yeah. When you Absolutely. go buy a house, Oh, when you go buy a car, you don't go, just give me that car. It's sexy. I like it. I like the color. You look for how, how's the safety? What's the, mm -hmm. do you have any like brakes? And does it have power windows? And you want to know all the things that make this car yeah. a great investment. Yeah. So it's the same thing for a man and woman when you're dating. Like, I want to know what I'm investing to. You should know what you're investing to too and not be having babies and creating and all this kind of stuff. And then just having these raggedy ass relationships yeah. and we're trying to build families yeah. we're trying to bring the black families back together and even if you're not together co-parent happily yeah <laughs> i mean let's try to co-parent so, <laughs> yeah so yeah. yeah that that is that nobody got nothing to say about that i would love to hear what you guys have to say what has made you walk out in the middle of a date this is men yeah. and women this is just not um uh, for women to answer this is for men because this helps us grow as a community, um, share, we share everything else on social media. So let's share things that will help us grow um, personally, professionally, spiritually, financially, yeah. and all that good stuff, right? So do we have a commercial, Hershey? Oh, we have a commercial. So we're going to go to this commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, debate yesterday oh, and wow. then we're going to talk to our guests and just get you guys some great information to help you end this year strong so we'll be right back spartans what is your profession <laughs> And we're back. And wait a minute. I want to make sure that I um, mention Marvin said many women can't carry a conversation. Oh, and I, 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 I can imagine it. Ladies, how are we representing ourselves out there? I mean, not carrying a conversation. I guess it depends. You know, I was going to say your age or something like that, but I'm just thinking like. Some people just don't have personality. Okay. It doesn't matter the age. Yeah. I have. I have a lot of people who just don't have any personality that sit in my chair and oh, they're gonna, older and they're mature they and they're intelligent. They have families, they, you know, but they just don't have any personality. Yeah. Melanie said, poor intellectual and thoughtful conversation. And that's my part. I need to be stimulated. I need to talk about yeah. something more than yeah. just, just ghetto gossip or mm -hmm. just like really minute conversations. Yeah. I want to be stimulated with yeah. something about, it's not always got to be about we talking deep, but it's something that we can grow from or that we can have a great conversation from. Uh, DJ Hershey said body odor. That, that right there, like, <laughs> mm, body odor on the, on the date or if you met them with body odor. Because if you met them with body odor, then we wouldn't be on a date. But if they came to the date with body odor, would you leave immediately? Or would you go on and sit the date out well, it depends on the, the body odor, you know what I mean? Body odor is body odor. No, I'm just saying, like, you can tell when somebody's nasty or somebody. It don't matter. Right. Funky, it don't matter. Funky is funky. You should have showed up to the day funky. Funky, funky is funky. Period. So Period. thank you guys for those uh, comments. And so we want to just jump in a little bit about the debate last night. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the fly. I enjoyed uh, Kamala saying, I'm speaking. And I like the way, no matter what, because I didn't know a lot about her until, you know, when she got nominated and then, you know, kind of do research. So I'm not here to judge nobody. I'm yeah. not. I know that we got two choices. Yeah. Um, and since we only have two choices, now you, okay, I'll say three for people that don't want to vote. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how you don't want to because then it's almost like you're putting maybe possibly the person you don't want in that position, whether that's yeah. Trump or that's Biden. 
But I like what I can say as a black woman, or she's a mixed black woman, because she, you got a percentage in it. You know? um, I like the way she handled herself because we are known to be very emotional. Um, and that's when they talk about women running in the country. It's like, oh my gosh, she might be emotional. She might be PMSing and this, but she handled herself like a classy, intelligent, well-educated woman. She was able to give him eye contact as he spoke, yeah. smile, but not let him disrespect her because we know that women are disrespected not only in politics, but in corporate America and just on the streets in general, the yeah. police. And mm -hmm. so to see her stand up for herself, that's what made me say, yeah. I like the way she handled herself. Mm -hmm. But this fly that got his own Twitter page now and all that kind of stuff, now I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I was breaking my, I was breaking my neck to get that camera out to get that flat. I was breaking my neck because I wanted to get it because it was like, what is that on his head? Yeah. And so, and it stayed there. They said for two minutes, I think, in thirty-four seconds. Shout out to the person that took the time. <laughs> but yeah. the flat stand, stood there, and it just made you feel like. I thought deeper than that fly it being there. Symbolism. It was. If somebody symbolism. put it out there that said something about the fly and it fear and stuff like that. And so I was just like, I believe in signs. I believe in different things happening for a certain reason and stuff. And so yeah. that was just plus the eye. So, and I hear now that pink eye is a, a symptom of COVID, which I didn't know. So that's what I heard last night. Because I was like, it's his <clears throat> eye and a fly. I fly, mm -hmm. right? So I'm like, what is going on with him? And so it was just, it was really, I enjoyed it better than the first one oh, yeah. because that was just reckless. And what about with the moderators? See, I couldn't moderate because I've been and told somebody like straight out, shut, shut up. You know what I'm saying? I know we have to be professional, but they yeah. can be so disrespectful. Yeah. And I like how she handled herself when she said, I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. I would like the same amount of time that he had. So I, I shout out to her and how she uh, handled herself, and it makes it even more powerful because she is a Black woman, okay? Yeah. No matter what y'all say. Yeah, she said, no, she, she, handled, she handled herself as a leader should. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I totally, 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 yeah. totally enjoy it. So, guys, please get out there and vote. I mean, go early. I know, don't let the lines discourage you because we'll stand in line for some of y'all for Slutty Vegan or for some people Black Friday. And stuff like that. Yeah, all the that kind of stuff. Because you know, we're standing in line for the kids' Jordans now. You know, I have a, a few clients who their children uh, they sell classics online or oh. they sell gym shoes online, so they're in line for the kids. Yeah, I'm not buying up the Jordans. There's no excuse. Get your <laughs> get your little wine or whatever in your flask if you go in the evening yeah. or something. Get your little <laughs> salad or something. I mean, there's no excuses because in this year we've seen the unbelievable for our time. So like, you know yeah, how when you okay. hear your grandparents talk about different uh, iconic experiences mm -hmm. in their lifetime, you're like, ooh, I went back then. You yeah. know, the Great Depression, I don't know nothing yeah. about it, yeah. you know. But now we have our own um, experience to share with our grandkids. Mm -hmm. Like in 2020, we used boy, boy, let me tell yeah. you. Know? <laughs> and so that's why I'm saying it is important to vote. Like it is, it just is because we need to. And so I'd rather see what these two can do to see what's been done. I don't agree with that. So shout out to Kamala and uh, Joe Biden for, you know, just giving us another choice and stuff. I almost would take Kanye by that. You know what I'm saying? I'm almost like, what Kanye at? Is he going to do something? Because it's just, it's just ridiculous what's going on. So guys, get out there and vote. If you can, um, I know they have early vote. Get out there and early vote. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not mailing nothing in. Yeah. I ain't mailing nothing in. I saw a video in 2014 where the girl was throwing, the male person was throwing the Ballots in the garbage. I don't trust them, and I'm going to vote in person. Yeah. You? Yeah. Yeah. You going in person? Yeah. Which, you, know, you know, early. You know, early. you know what? <laughs> you know what I folks will be doing. Yeah. Make it a um, party. Yeah. Make y'all all get together. Y'all meet up. Y'all get in line together. Mm -hmm. Y'all have a good time, and y'all vote. Make it a voting yeah. party. A, yeah. a vote poll. Be creative. Like yeah. we have been all year. Yep. Yep. So, guys, um, I want to introduce you to my guest, uh, this beautiful young lady I met through uh, another young lady that I had met, dope group of women. Like, they invited me to their brunch and stuff, and I was like, oh, my God, because I like being around powerful women, women that are progressive, um, people, women that are real, women that are humble. And so they invited me into their um, space, and uh, each one of them, oh, 
just each one of them. Wow. And so we, we had been talking uh, for a little while and she was telling me about what she do. Uh, she has a company called in Ignite Within. Okay. Like that, right? Oh, yeah. that my, ooh. And so, and um, so I wanted to get her on the show. And so she has a new book called Dumped, Not Dumped On. Um, and we're gonna talk to her about the book and get a little bit insight what it's about and see if we can get a few tips um, to help us finish this year off strong and just personally and professionally, and then show you how to go buy the book so you can read the whole thing. So without further ado, I would like to bring on the last is Agua. I got it. Hi. 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 How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Hi, Hi everybody. What's up? What's up out there? Yes, yeah, thank you for being here. We've been working on this for a little while, and I'm so, so, so glad to have you here. And so I want to jump in and tell us a little bit about yourself, and then I want to jump into the book. Okay, um, again, again, thank, thank you so, so much, much for having, having me. me. Um, you know, we, we kind of hit it off when we first, first met, met each other, just talking, talking and chatting, chatting and seeing, and seeing you, know, you know, as we, as we do, do, we connect, connect. Well, how, well, how can we support one another? So, so I'm happy, happy to be here. here. We, are we are supporting, supporting each, each other in this endeavor and just so much appreciate you. Uh, Stacy, And so, as I said, my company is Ignite Within, and I'm an international author, speaker, coach, and strategist. And I work with uh, professionals who are disengaged with what you do. You hate what you do. You don't know what it is that you want to do to get some clarity of purpose and objective to then be able to set an accelerated and a sustainable plan that gets you to the outcomes that you want. So that is a, a quick and short of what it is that I do. Again, I do that through coaching. I do that through training. I do that through speaking and working strategy with, uh, with professionals. Oh, that is yeah. awesome. And I think we need, you know, when you hear about so many women that's either in empowerment or in personal development, mm -hmm. I think it's so much needed. Like it's mm -hmm. to me never enough because everybody ain't real. Um, yeah. well, what they do, you got me and girls doing empowerment. Um, but I believe that it is so necessary in every state, in every country, because there's a constant, um, there's a constant um, growth that we need to have in order to go to different levels. Because yeah. like your 20s is one way, your 30s is one way. You're you, you're taking on so much baggage and different challenges and stuff like that. And then work and all and, and being a wife or being a mother. There's so many different things that we deal with and we harp. And then we we keep it in, and then it affects our life professionally, personally, and you know different areas. So tell us about dumped and not dumped on. I like that because I don't want to be dumped on. Ooh, yes. yes, dumped, not dumped on, y'all. Dumped, not dumped on. I say just because you've been dumped does not mean you have to get uh, dumped on. Is how to stop reliving the negative impact of rejection in your life, in your business, and in your career. And so we all know somebody, and if we're really honest, we ourselves have been in a place where we've been dumped. Yes. I like saying dumped because it don't feel good to be rejected. That's whether you've been fired, you've been laid off, you have um, didn't get into the school you wanted to get into, you were out trying to, people been out wanting to get loans for their businesses and rejected and not being able to get that. We are in client relationships and client relationships and breakups through the clients, personal relationships, the divorce rate is up. I think it's uh, 40 to 50% of the divorce rate is a divorce rate these days. So we all experience this uh, place of rejection. We've all experienced it if we're honest with it. Yeah. Right? Or we know somebody who has. And I believe that where we are within this virus, this COVID, we're in a health, economic, and a political uh, crisis right now. And we, we're just in this environment where I really want people to take ownership of the fact that change is inevitable. Yes. It is inevitable. The need for change exists. There are signals 
of change, internal signals, that anxiety, frustration, sadness, the fears that come up, the joy even, the happiness, those are all internal signals that's telling you that something's right or something's not right. right. And then we have those external signals that tell us uh, that something is amiss, something is just not right. And we need to understand that there are consequences when we ignore signals. I don't even say that we miss the signal. I say that we are ignoring signals. Right. Yes, you're right. And our thoughts and behaviors have to be different as a result of that. And we need to be more proactive when it comes to that. Because we get into a situation where we have been dumped. We have been rejected. Mm -hmm. Change has come. Yeah. There were internal signals that was telling you something wasn't right. Yeah. Right. yeah. I, I believe there's always... You have to admit to that, right? Yeah, because I believe that there's always signals, signs, or whatever you want to call it, and we ignore them. You know what I mean? Even relationships, uh, you got a feeling you're about to be fired for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. You, you, it's, That's what I think is God given to us. Yeah. It is intuition is um what's the other um it's something that lets you know that something's not like you said not right and wrong and i am a witness i admit that i have ignored signs and just kept going because we trying to be compassionate or we just like you know or maybe it's just lack of uh, self-confidence or whatever the case may be that you stay longer in a relationship or you see a job is maybe dead end and stuff i was listening to something the other day i've been try to change up my morning routine because, you know, we get stuck sometime and I've been listening to these motivational videos and I was listening mm -hmm. to Abraham Hicks and she was giving a scenario about, you know, you've been doing this job for 15 years mm -hmm. da, 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 and they bring a new girl in and they like train her and she does the job well, way better than you and all this kind of stuff. And I know the emotion of that hits us like, wait a minute now, yeah. but it, it's not necessarily a strike at you. And so like what you're saying as well that I'm hearing too, is that change is inevitable. So if somebody, I have to train somebody to do part of my job and they're doing it better, I don't need to take that personal. Mm -hmm. I don't need to keep You have to be ready to know that you're gonna get tapped on the shoulder and what you are experiencing today and what is happening with you today can completely change. Mm -hmm. And we have to model our lives, our businesses, our careers as though that change can hit us in an instant, right? Yes. Because when we get hit with that rejection, whether again, it's on the job or in personal or client or school or whatever, we get shocked. Oh my God, I can't believe that they did that to me. Uh, and then you get into, den you know, denial. Oh, Lord, I know that didn't just happen. I know they didn't treat me like that. Uh-uh, I know they didn't do that. And then you get angry. And then you get frustrated. And then you get sad. And it's not just an emotional pain. That's what I was talking about, the emotional pain of it. But the physical pain, your blood pressure go up. Your heart yeah. rate goes up. You get muscle tension and spasms. Can't yes. eat, can't sleep. So there is this negative impact to that experience of getting rejected or getting dumped. And then we walk around as though everything is fine. So you get dumped, you get rejected, you're going through divorce, you got fired from the job, whatever that may be. And then when somebody sees us, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine, everything's okay with that straight back, that smile on our face, but internally, we are just being eaten alive. And we are staying in things way too long. I said the divorce rate is 40 to 50% of people are getting divorced. Uh, with workers, 24% of workers hate what they do, hate what they do. 63% are disengaged. So we're staying stuck, scared, broke and broken in situations and relationships that we just don't like. Yeah. That fear holds the sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I understand now, especially with this pandemic. I think a lot of people, fear was created. Yeah. Uncertainty was created and stuff. And I get that. And I know that sometimes when you talk with us or you talk with certain people, and it's like, oh, yeah, you know, don't feel like that. I feel all those emotions, too. When I first got here in my place and then COVID hit and I was like, oh, Lord, mm -hmm. you know, I felt a little fear. 
but then I remember who I served. And then on top of that, I was like, you know, I could either take this and, you know, take these lemons and make a lemonade, yeah. or I can fall further into the fear of what's happening. And so that's why I embrace change. I don't like it sometimes. Sometimes the change is really good. You're like, oh my God, I'm moving on up. But then sometimes the change is, I didn't know this was happening. I didn't know this was coming to an end, you know, and you're not ready. But I always try to But find. we do know that things end. Yes. That's my point. We know things can end at any given moment in time. Who, why are we assuming that this is gonna be forever, right? Mm -hmm. Know that it can end. Don't want it to end. I want it to stay. Mm -hmm. But you have to know that it could end because that individual could change. The situation, circumstances could change. So you have to know and you have to model yourself to be ready that that could be the case. And if it does happen, if that change does happen with my job and I'm fired or laid off or whatever, what have I done to model myself to be ready for that change? Am I overspending? Am I, you know, spending more than what I earn? Am I not saving? Do I not have any other alternatives because my head has been in the sand and only with this tunnel vision and I've not looked back and looked out at what are the opportunities and possibilities to be ready for what might come? We don't have to sit and wait on it and then be like, oh my God, I can't believe that that happened. We can model our lives as though change is inevitable, that the need for change exists. Uh, well, and then plan and prepare for all of that. Yes, Gladys, I think you said the magic words, you know, people have their head in the sand. And people are not ready and prepared and don't know to get ready and prepared because, you know, examples like um, we have a fairy tale marriage, yeah. relationship marriage, and then um, things happen, they go, they down spiral and you're not, you're not engaged enough. Your head is in the sand and you're not paying attention to the signs. Or even if you are paying attention to the signs and they are very clear, then well, mama and grandma said, fight, fight for that marriage. Right. Pray for that man. Pray for this marriage. You can pray it through. You can pray it out. It's the, you know, a, a God can do anything. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, and absolutely. But like you said, we have to be prepared. But I don't think anybody knows what to do to be prepared. I do now. I do now. now. <laughs> 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 everything glad Talk yes, about. Gladys, you are absolutely right on yours, but the example I'll give is when you get into relationships, when I got married, when I got into this last relationship, you don't think about it ending. You don't think no, about no. it could change. You think no. about this is it, we're going to be together or whatever. Yeah. I mean, in the back of your mind, you know life changes, but you don't want to believe it's going to change. So you don't prep yourself or, or anything, and when it happened, you devastated. I wasn't devastated because I knew the signs were there. So yeah. I'm saying not to go into a relationship or anything going, it's going to end. You just have to go, it could change. Yeah. And it if it does, my mother always taught me to be independent. Yeah. 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 So that if anything happens, whether that's in a job, whether that's in a personal relationship or whatever, that I have put myself in a position of independence so that I have some, some buffer. When that yeah. change event happens, right? Yeah, so yeah. you have to create a buffer knowing that change is inevitable and it might come at any moment in time. Yeah. And be ready for that. Just ready. Just we have to just accept the fact and expect the change is gonna happen, that rejection is gonna happen. And yeah. that you got rejected, and you just have to expect to know that it can happen again. Yeah. yeah. If it happens again, then how are you going to be prepared for that? Yeah. How are you going to still land on your feet if that happens? If something happens on a job, you can't. I worked in my career 34 years with my company. You don't do that today. 
No. So you have to be prepared that if that job taps you on the shoulder, that you are not overspending, that you have saved money, that yeah. you have a network of people outside of that immediate job area, that you know how marketable you are. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that in a relationship that you need to have some men on the side just in case that relationship does not work. I'm not saying that. Why because not? sometimes what you need to be prepared for is mentally knowing mm -hmm. that that's not the end of life, that that yeah. rejection does not define who you are. Exactly. exactly. One door closes, as they say, another one opens. And sometimes, like you say, when you don't focus on change is inevitable, mm -hmm. the universe, God, Yahweh, could be moving you yeah. into a different phase in your life and being resistant of it and trying to stay where you are and hold on to something that you've either outgrown. And that's the one thing I'm learning about, really learning about relationships is a lot of times, what well, ain't sometimes they're not put together right in the first place, but a lot of times people outgrow each other, especially when they've been together for a long, long time. She might be doing this, he may be like comfortable mm -hmm. or vice versa. And then from there, they drift apart. And they don't understand, or maybe they do understand, and they try to fix it. Because I'm all about fixing it if you both are in agreement. Right. But if you're seeing that you guys are not aligning anymore, then that is a time to me that you can start, if you haven't already been doing it, adjusting yourself, um, uh, loving on yourself. Because it's hard to break up, to get fired, to do anything it is hard, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. especially for women, we're emotional. So, you know, we deal with a little bit more than, the, you know, sometimes I think that men do. But this is the whole point of the show and just educating people because life is ever changing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the more that you prepare yourself, the more that you educate and, and, and read and do and take therapy, you put yourself in a better position of dealing with life a lot better. I'm going to die and be pissed off about everything that's been happening. And, <laughs> oh my God, and I didn't have a successful relationship. I want to look at the experiences that I've had, look at the good, look at what the lesson was, because it's a lesson, and be able to live these days that I have, which we don't know, in peace and exactly. in joy. And I say that how you can work on when you get dumped, to not get dumped on, is to, number one, accept it, acknowledge it, and accept that I have been dumped. It is so hard for people to just accept that fact. They say that I can't believe for years, miserable, can't find another job because they're so torn up about what happened on the other job, won't get into another relationship because of what happened in another relationship. Accept it. Yes. Whatever it is, for you, even if you don't like it, even if it wasn't right, it wasn't fair, they did you wrong, you have to accept that that is what happened. Yes, yes, And then yes. you have to forgive yourself because forgive yourself because maybe you tolerated it too long. You stayed in it too long. Maybe you ignored the signals in the beginning where you shouldn't have even got into the job or relationship in the first place. And, yeah. it, and forgiving it, whatever it is, that person, that situation, yeah and, yeah, and more to what you were saying, uh -oh. because there is a lesson. I'm thankful for the opportunity. I know that I have been let go at, at, at work or I didn't get a promotion or something that I should have gotten. And I went back and I said, thank you to the person who didn't hire. Thank you so much for not hiring me for this position, because if you had hired me, I would have still been right here. As opposed to living in Africa and living my dream, not just thinking about it and dreaming about it, but actually living it. So we have to look at this rejection or being dumped as an opportunity for something better. So yeah. expect that, yes, rejection, all that's going to happen, but also expect that something better is going to come from that renewing of your mind, that renewing of your life, your situation, right? You have to and just take it a whole different way. And then I also want to say that there's a time when we need to do the dumping. Yeah. We don't have to wait to get dumped now. There's a time when we need to decide that it is time for us to leave and not stick and stay so long. Oh, 
tell me about it. Right? But that we say enough. We so much want to control everyone else and everybody else needs to change that job, that manager, that husband, that boyfriend needs to change. And everything is changing around us but us. Yeah. We need to think about what do I need to change? What do I want? See, what, yeah. I mean, what do I want? The three words I hear the most from clients is, I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. What are you good at doing? I don't know. They can tell you what you what they don't want, but I'm talking about but what do you want? Right. Mm -hmm. What what kind of a job career do you really want? What kind of business do you really want? What kind of a client do you really want? What kind of a relationship with a man do you really want? Right. Yeah. And yeah. saying I don't know should not be the answer, the That's accepted okay. answer. <laughs> you have to go figure it out. Yeah, because if you don't know, you'll get anything. You'll yeah. settle for anything. Mm -hmm. And so that's why taking time, like, you know, whether you're single, whether you lost that job or whatever, to really ponder. I have a friend that's working at a job. I think she's been there like five, six years. She complained about it so much. I feel like I work there. Right. And I'm thinking, like, you're smart. Why don't you start looking for another job? But I think the complacent, being complacent, and then, like, because when you think about, switching your whole life, whether it's a job, mm -hmm. so that's income, or whether it's a relationship or marriage, you're like, okay, I got kids, I'm gonna have to find another place, you're not mm -hmm. prepared financially, mm -hmm. and then it's like, it's easier to stay, or it's easier to stay at this job, because I've been here five years trying to find another job, I'm not sure, yeah. and so for me, I've always been a risk taker, a calculated risk taker, but I just, I've never had a job longer than <laughs> I think I was with the Ricky Smiley Morning Show maybe four years, and I was almost like, oh my God, I've been here too long. Not because I can't keep a job, just because I'm a creator. And so when you speak of clients, that's me. Like you say, who's my client? Or what is it that I really want to do? I know I was, I knew at 21, I wasn't supposed to be in four walls. Not four walls where you coming in every yeah. day and hi, Mr. Johnson and all that. I knew that. I was running around talking to everybody, seeing their dreams and aspirations. <laughs> And so that's when I started to say, hey, let me create my own. I created an event planner company. Then I went to personal assistant. Now I'm in project management. I've done radio. But I've had to pull myself out of some of those spaces. Yeah. But I've always been an optimistic chick. I've mm -hmm. always been. I've always believed the glass is half, half full, that there's more out there, that we weren't just meant to pay bills and die. I just feel that way. And so that's why I'm glad to have you on the show as well as Sharice, when she comes on, we talk this, and not to make it all deep and all that stuff, but let's have fun with this. Change your life, change your world. You know what I mean? Yeah, saying? and you talked about that mindset of, of uh, being an optimist. The National Science Foundation says that we have up to 60,000 thoughts per day. Yes. And of those thoughts, 85% of those thoughts are negative thoughts. And of those negative thoughts, 95% are repeated. So when you're in that negative tape spiral in your head about what is going on, that's real. That's just who we are as human beings. But it takes um, intentional effort to snap yourself up out of that. Yeah. 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 The good in whatever situation that you're in to find the certainty in the midst of that uncertainty. God has my back. I know that I have skills. I know that I'm a good woman. I know that whatever, right? But yeah. to find that certainty, and, and I say that it can be, we think we have to make this big giant leap yeah. into yeah. something new. It can be as tiny as the size of a little mustard seed that gets you started. And then you nurture and you grow that until that blossoms into something that you want that helps you to achieve the outcomes that you want for your life, for your business, for your yeah. career. It's, it's doable. It can happen. We deserve yeah. to be happy. We deserve to have what we want. And just know that when you are dumped, when you are rejected, look at it as an opportunity. Don't take it personal. Right. right. Yes. yes. You better say that, Gladys. Yes, Gladys. Yes, 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 yes
And we can use that in so many areas in our life. It's just about adopting the concept. You mm -hmm. know, hearing those words can really change someone's life because some people don't hear it that way no. or have never heard that concept, Gladys. You know what I mean? That's why I feel like it's so important for each and every one of us to speak what we, you know, what is your mission out here? Yeah. What is your gift, you know, if you have to get to your people? Because I just heard that thing different. Yeah. I just heard it very different, Gladys. Yeah. I've I just recently come through that entire situation that you spoke about, and I heard it different today. So yeah. that's, that's good. Then, then a mission has been accomplished. That's right. right. Because we have to learn how to use change. Yeah. Not be destroyed by change. How yes. do we use change? Change does not have to use. I'm going to tweet that. I'm going to put your name. I'm going to tweet that. Yes. I love it. We can do this, y'all. I'm telling yes. you, life is good. And uh, my yes. cup says, see the good. Can y'all see the cup? It says, see the good. All right, see the, good. Yes. see the good. See the good, right? See the good in whatever situation that you're in. It doesn't define who you are. We just allow it to define us. We make assumptions that that means that we're not good, that we're bad, that you know we're not worthy, that we're not enough just as we are. And I want to say to you that you are enough just as you are, that you are worthy to have peace and love and joy and success in your life. Yes. Yes, right? yes. Yes. Awesome. Oh my God. Thank you yeah, so much, Gladys. So can you tell? Thank you so much for sharing that. And can you tell everybody how to get the book, how to follow you, get with Ignite Within? Because that's why I love sharing my platform with a plethora of people, men and women, mm -hmm. because my fingerprint is different for some people, her fingerprint, yours. So I love sharing my platform with other women that align with, we all trying to help people as we help ourselves. Yeah, and absolutely. so each one teach one. And once we start all gathering, you can build a community of strong people, of people that are accepting life for what it is, but also finding the joy. Cause I'm not, I, I'm taking everything by the horns and I'm riding this thing out. And yeah. I'm so blessed and happy where I am right now. So can you tell everybody how to get the book, how to follow you and all that? Yeah, so I'm on all the social media, Ignite Within, uh, you on Instagram and Twitter, and I'm on Facebook as well. Um, and my website is ignitewithin.org, ignitewithin.org. And my book is next week will be on Amazon, but if you go on my website and subscribe, you will get uh information from me about how you can get the book you can go on my website and i'm for those of you all who are listening if you go on my website you can get a free consultation with me a strategy session have your girlfriend give me a call that's been in that job too long and yeah. have a strategy session to help with some steps to move her forward yeah, yeah okay. but you know ignitewithin.org um, if you subscribe uh, on that, then you will be in my tribe to be able to get valuable information. There's a lot of free resources up there already. Other uh, videos and lives that I have done that's message filled, value filled for you, as well as other downloads. So just go on ignitewithin.org, follow me on all the social media, and um, I am a, I'm a messenger. That's right. Yes, you are a messenger, a vessel to all. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. And I look forward to coming and talking on your show as well. Yes, Rose Colored Lessons, Sip and Talk, uh, Tuesday morning Sip and Talks. Thank you so much, Stacey, oh. for having me. Love y'all. All right. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, that was awesome. Yes. That was awesome. Yes. Man. It gives, you, it gives you a different perspective from different people, no matter how yeah. much you do empowerment or you speak over people or yeah. speak the positivity. Mm -hmm. You hear things differently when you hear it from somebody else. Mm -hmm. It may be tapped into an area that you haven't thought about. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. Yeah. I, lo I love it. Yeah. And that's it, guys. That's what it is about. And that's why when I talk about 
blessing the pandemic and all that. I know some people understand what I'm talking about. And I know some people are probably like, yeah, I'm going through it. Yeah. I've lost my job. And mm-hmm. so I am definitely, um, what is it? Compassionate for that yeah. because I ain't working either. You know what I'm saying? Not technically at like my clients. Yeah. Well, let me take that back. I just got two clients. Shout out to Jesus. But I'm just saying is that, you know, we've all been in that space where it was like, how are we going to make money? Did we have enough money yeah. saved and stuff? And I didn't. And so I started finding myself learning how to do Forex trading yeah. and then doing um, uh, Bitcoin and stuff like yeah. that. So I'm right. taking the information that I'm getting and, and applying it to how I can use it to change my life, yeah. to how I can do uh, use it to help other people change yeah. their life. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's what we're here for. I think this pandemic has happened for us and not to us. And we have to realize that, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? But what does that mean for your life? If you lost a job, I just had this conversation with someone, you know, his friend uh, just bought a $300,000 home mm-hmm. and he lost his job weeks later. And, you know, I'm being all optimistic about it. And then we got into a debate because he's like, well, this ain't no time to be optimistic. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> when is not a time to be optimistic? Right, right. But he was coming from a standpoint of right now he's in shock. Right. And I understand that, you know, you take a little few minutes, your little few minutes of a pity party. Yeah. But after that, you need to use the rest of that energy strategically That's and intentionally right. to find out how you to going. find out what your next best move is. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> like you, you if you spend the time on the negative or on the old war as me, mm-hmm. it's like it's it's counterproductive. Like yeah. it's like you're not okay, I need to pay my rent. Yeah, That's, I mean my mortgage. That's what I yeah. need to do. What can I do at this moment to pay my mortgage or to pay my car note and stuff? I know a lot a lot of um companies were giving those like so many months mm-hmm. not to pay it and yeah. all that and you know um my car note did that and then they started doing it well okay we're getting a little better you gotta pay half yeah. and i'm like but it's still i'm saying the woe is me and the longer that you stay in that space yeah. the longer it takes you to get out and i'm like i ain't trying to do it so stacy check this out you were intelligent enough educated enough wise enough um business-minded enough to acquire a job or a career or a business that got you a $300,000 home, Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure- You can use that tap. You can use all those skills to create whatever it is that you need to generate enough money to pay your mortgage and the rest of your bills. We, but we're only using how much percentage of our brain? It's real small. It's, it's like real right, small. It's very small. I don't know the numbers, mm-hmm. but it's small. Like we're not using, we're not operating our full potential. Right. And then, okay. So did you get your, um, did you get your $300,000 home off of one income? Right. Okay. What you? Or, yeah, whatever the situation is, you don't have multiples. And I'm not judging. I'm not saying mm-hmm. that judging, but I'm saying, like Gladys was saying, we need to be prepared yeah. for the just in case. Yeah, and that's why I was saying, and this is going to be a little plug, yes, I'm going to do it. Because that's why when I talked last week, and I like to just touch on about the Bitcoin that I do, yeah. and every, you know, a lot of people find about cryptocurrency, and this is why I keep preaching, one reason. Mm-hmm. I'm so okay, so no. because, because I'm, I'm excited, mm-hmm. because <laughs> it's times that we don't, some of us, white, black, whoever you are, don't know what's going on like i always use starbucks and uber when they first came out i didn't know about them so i didn't know about the investment you know investing in them and stuff like that now that i'm i know bitcoin has been out since 2009 but i also know now how i can supersize my bitcoin so i got you can buy your bitcoin and cash out you can let it sit there and you can let it grow um organically you know through you know through um the fluctuation of the market Mm -hmm. or you can put it in a company that trades your Bitcoin on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. And when profits are earned, you get a percentage of that profit into your Bitcoin, which is doing what is growing your Bitcoin daily. So we know savings accounts aren't making any money. So mm-hmm. if I can make 50 cent, 20 cent, 10 cent, whatever, a dollar a day on my Bitcoin, right. 
It just makes sense to me. So when I share this yeah. information, I'm just like she said, I'm a messenger. I'm being a yeah. vessel. I'm sharing it. Do it if you want to or not. It doesn't make me right. a difference. But I know my job is to share. Right. And so that, I got into Forex. I got into that. I'm looking to buy land. There are some things that I want to do because now I'm what they call really awake. You know right. what I mean? And I'm taking this time that I have alone being a first time empty nester to, and this is not for everybody. I'm trying to unlock, I'm looking at videos and stuff. How do I unlock that other percentage of my brain? You know what I'm saying? Thank How you. do I attract more to me? And as Abraham Hicks say, you can, you can want something so much and concentrate on so much that you create resistance yeah. between it. Yeah. So it's like a whole bunch of stuff out there, guys, that you can be taking this time or some time to find out how to ignite yeah. yourself, how to activate the rest of that brain power. Because mm -hmm. I can only imagine if you're already intelligent, smart, and 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 all this, what more can you do when you yeah. realize, yeah. oh my God, yeah, I am really smart. Yeah. And now and you learn to keep the noise down. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You start winding down at night. Mm -hmm. Start to, before you go to bed, I'm hyper. Y'all know it. I love <laughs> talking and all that. But I told my sister, I was like, because she had surgery, and I was like, you know what? She's not sleeping well. I said, you should. And as I'm telling her this, I'm going, you should do this. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, wind down before bed. Because I'm like this. I'm doing stuff. And the next thing you know, I'll take a shower and I go to bed. And it's like, mm, that's a little no, harsh. No, no. I now start winding my mind down. Mm -hmm. I turn my phone on side, and my son told me not to. But I'm like, you're 28. But anyway, um. I turn my phone on, um, you know, on side, it'll vibrate. Yeah. And then I give me a cup of tea. I may take a melatonin. I get in the bed because nobody really just goes to sleep. Yeah. But I found that since I've been doing that, I'm more refreshed. Yeah. Um, my mind is clear. And, and for people that's like me, that's hyper, we need that. Like you have people like, Sharice is a little more melatonin. So she, you know, may, but for people that like myself, I really highly suggest it. Don't just... Mm -hmm have your whole day so busy and then yeah. just bam, you know yeah. what I mean? Wind down, start learning how to activate what God gave us because we smart as people building bridges and roads and <laughs> buildings yeah. and all this kind of stuff and coming up with ideas, the gap from Elon Musk and all this mm -hmm. stuff. They know better than we are, mm -hmm. no smarter, maybe a little more advancement, maybe just a little more willpower to be a better engineer or whatever it is. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying take this pandemic and flip, reverse it. And what yeah. is that? Flip it and reverse it. You know, yeah. something like yeah. that. Make it work for you because everybody got a whole bunch of free, most people got a whole bunch of free money and y'all gonna get taxed for that. Believe we are. But I'm saying, did you take advantage of that? Pay your bills. But did you take a little bit and carve it out for something that can help multiply mm -hmm. what you're trying to do? Yeah, absolutely. It's so funny. Everything you're saying is like in such alignment with my challenge, you know, it's all about creating your daily rituals and your nightly rituals. Uh -huh. But it's so much deeper, Stacey. Like, we have to protect our energy. You know, you have to do that at night. So you need to cleanse your aura. You need to cleanse your space, uh -huh. right? And this is before bed, yes. okay? And you need to uh, breathe deep, yeah. visualize, visualize, and you need to uh, meditate and go to sleep. So when you are aligning yourself um, your energy and your goals, you are protecting yourself. Yeah. You know, I consider my alignment, my source and my accountability, yeah. my guide and my protector. Yes. You know, because if I do that nightly, that means that I've protected myself, I've set my guide up, you know, and I'm aligned. So when I wake up, I wake up the same way. Exactly. And that is what, you know, I'm teaching my ladies in my group how important it is. They think, oh, it's just true. And you know, oh, we just do so cute, and we're not. Right. I'm teaching you to protect your energy, cover, cover, and protect your energy, so that you know how to move about the day. Yes. Intentionally and strategically. Yep. And it won't be things won't bother you, and yeah. things won't bother you so much. Right. Like somebody hit me today. Like I put Kamala's picture up. I don't even know what this is, and they inbox me to say I don't agree with. Her as VP and as, and I was like, the okay. old me probably would be like, what you had me for in my inbox? Yeah. And I was just like, okay. Okay. Right. Okay. And the other thing, I'm going to give y'all this. At night, what I do now, they have YouTube videos that say, listen to this before you go to bed. Your mm -hmm. subconscious mind yeah. 
hears things. Yeah. So it's speaking affirmation. It's speaking these powerful yeah. um, quotes or whatever it's saying. Yeah. And you, your subconscious mind is always working. Yeah. So when you go to sleep and you fall asleep, you think, I ain't heard nothing. But you'll be surprised what your mind is hearing. <laughs> One thing I had to stop doing, I had stopped, got back on it, stopped, got back on it. It's getting up in the morning. And what we do first thing in the morning? Maybe grab pee, but grab that phone. Maybe mm -hmm. grab that phone and go pee. But I'm saying... I had to make it intentional and I've just started this back up because I'm guilty. Mm -hmm. And I, I pick up the phone. My first thing is I hit my Bible app. Mm -hmm. And because I'm not a, I'm not a big rope in the Bible and mm -hmm. uh, where I go. So I have the Bible app where I go in there and it gives you daily stuff. Mm -hmm. Then I listen to something inspirational. I like mm -hmm. Eric Thomas. Mm -hmm. I listen to, to, to Ray Roberts. I listen to something that's going to help me start my day off while I'm feeling powerful, strong, yeah. and got full of energy. Mm -hmm. And that does set, y'all, it's, it's underestimated how that sets your day. So when somebody come at you rah-rah, you can possibly, I guarantee 80% at least, unless you're just an evil person, get yourself in a place where you can overlook it, you can brush it off, you won't take it personal. Stay on your throne, baby. Yeah. Stay on your throne. I mean, it's so important to set those rituals. It's everything. People have no idea. Like, you have a ritual. Yeah. You know, I mean, people wonder why you bounce around and you're good and mess just bounces off of you. You don't have time. Yeah. First of all, somebody randomly inboxes you and you're about to engage yourself. Right. I know you. I don't know you. you I don't, have no I'm not minute. in a debate. No, I'm not in a debate. I have no minute to engage in a debate with you. I, I don't even know you. Where'd you even get your knowledge from? You know? So, no, we're not going to do that. So, guys, I know we are winding down. We are down to our hour, but I, this one, you know, this this is my yeah. thing right here. You know, yeah. Rod brings a little bit more of the funny and stuff, but this is always. Uh, my sweet spot yeah. because I'm always enlightened and, and when I get off I'm like yeah, yeah. you know mm -hmm. so when I speak this I'm ministering to myself yeah. like I'm not talking like I got it together yeah. I'm ministering back to myself mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm holding myself accountable mm -hmm. you know what I mean and you will have moments where you gotta be like oh man I check Facebook yeah. it's okay yeah. now you got the chance to tonight wind down the next yeah. morning you know what I'll face nope I'm not going to do it I'm going to go ahead and listen to something that gives me some energy for the day and that's all we, we're trying to share with you guys and stuff like that's that it. yeah so be oh, happy. I don't even have my uh, don't be so excited about this I don't even have a message to self today but oh, you always have a message to self oh, I pull, so much right. pull, pull it out pull it out <laughs> what I will say is is that Every day is a new day and an opportunity to be a better you, to be a greater you. And you, and we are all only given so much time in this world and we do not know when our expiration date is. So I suggest the way I've tried to live my life is to be happy and whole, energetic, a beautiful person, no ill intentions, and just live the life that God has given us mm -hmm. because we don't know when it's going to end. And so try not to sink so far into your woes, into your problem, and find a way to remove those problems or at least to make them better. Mm -hmm. Do not allow your circumstances to be who you are because that is not who you are. Circumstances change every day. And today could be not so good day and tomorrow could be a better day. So stay positive, stay motivated, stay encouraged, and definitely stay optimistic. Oh, and um, that was good. I, I, I will tell you, I guess next week it is a, um, I don't know if I'm going to switch her around because I am looking to have Tawanda Braxton on next week. Mm -hmm. um, but I will be streaming live from Chicago. I will not be here. I mean, I'll be having a little stuff. I'll be having a ride going on, <laughs> but I have a little stuff going on. So I will be in Chicago next week and I will be uh, broadcasting live from there. So I will keep you guys updated with who the guest is. And I, as always, I appreciate you for supporting us, supporting Cherise. Please tell them how to follow you and because she has some amazing things going on. So if I'm not your cup of tea, I got some bunnies for you. Okay.
You can follow me at D Sharice B across all social media platforms. And she has a lot of great stuff going on. And then she be laying my hair. So we're going to see what's coming up next, y'all. Don't be thinking about it over here. No, oh, oh, right. <laughs> because she know. has she has <laughs> lifted herself into another space. She's been a hairstylist for, what, 25 plus years? Yes, and yes. now she's found her change. Yes. And so and she's doing very well at it. So, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> please like, share, and all that good stuff. And even when I put it up, y'all, again, please share. Appreciate y'all. Awesome. See you next week. I had a great time. Good stuff. Thank you.